I can see why store. We're gonna show you how to update the TF card of the Henshaw uh, program update using the TF uh, card. And what we're gonna need is a TF card. We're gonna need our laptop to uh, transfer it onto the TF card, and we're gonna need our um, pretty much our car. So we're gonna give it a kick, open this up. I kind of like that kick mode. We're gonna have to pretty much open this all up again, get to our controller box. Whether you have the controller box on the left-hand side as I do, or the right-hand side, just make sure you can get to the controller box. So we're gonna set everything up here. Uh, we're gonna open it up, and we're gonna go ahead and connect your speakers first if you have it disconnected. I have it conveniently right here, uh, so I can actually connect it when I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it back, because you're it's gonna reset everything to default, saying so you're gonna be able to want to hear the beep so you can set it back to where you need it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and connect it right now. Uh, I got a special program update. I asked Tesla, I mean, I asked Hanshaw to uh, pretty much provide me the, what happened was, was the, that they took out the, the trunk closing strength uh, when they did the update of the version three software. I guess they were having a lot of trouble with people not knowing how to set it. So they couldn't actually help people as far as making sure that they're able to um, close their trunk. Cause some of them were too light of a close and they didn't know how to set it. So, but my case was it was too hard of to clothes and I wish to have it a little bit more. Sorry, I'm trying to feed my wires in there. I go, oh, don't want to lose the two. Just joining back the connectors here. Should be very simple. Here we go. All right, now I can, should hear it beat back again. I can always test this out. So we can push this right here and see, make sure. There we go, the beep came back. So now we have the noise again. So we're gonna go ahead and do the update of the TF card right now. Uh, there's a burrito for you inside the house. Do you need it? Huh? The burrito for you inside the house. Yeah. Bagel. You had bagel earlier this morning? Okay. Brother Law's just starting his day. All right. Uh, I think the TF card should be in here, I believe. I might put it in here, who knows, I might have. Hopefully I brought it. I'll be devastated if I did. Oh, there it is, right there. Uh, just keeping this little protective uh, plastic here so far he's done me good now he sent it to me in a special file name I put it in my Dropbox and then I moved it let me go ahead and show you here he called it a special version uh, B-I-N-E he's gonna name it uh, since I love it so much the soft close uh, functionality he's gonna name it uh, Michael's version but uh, I have it here so we're gonna do the TF card update. It's very simple. Just make sure you do use a TF card. Make sure you don't get no more than 32 gigabyte or even better, just go with eight gigabyte because you need to format it FAT32 and eight gigabyte seems to work the best. Recommend it. You don't need a lot of storage just to put a small file like that on there and then you can format it FAT32. So I'm gonna go through the whole process again, see how it loads up. I'm gonna go and format it even though there's an existing uh, card in there. Now, if you already have existing BI in there, you don't have to actually uh, reformat it, but I'm gonna do it for those who are just starting out to know how to update their card again. So let's just go ahead and do a format. It's gonna take less than five seconds. So here we go, format. Uh, make sure it says FAT32. Hit start. It's gonna wipe, uh, make sure it's uh, your uh, SD card drive and not your uh, hard drive, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> if it takes longer than that, normally it's not your uh, SD card because it shouldn't take a Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over to my SD side and we're gonna rename it update. The reason why is, this is only for our archive reason, why they name it uh, differently than why they shouldn't just name it update when they send it to you. Well, it's for your own archive to know what version you have. Like over here, I have the previous two versions right there. And this one is actually the newest, uh, well, I consider it the newest version with the soft close uh, reinstated. So I'm gonna go ahead and name it update. The reason why you have to name it update is your controller box your handshot controller box would not read anything other than that file name. So there it is, it's in there now. So let's go and pop it out. Uh, you could inject it if you really wanna be careful with your SD card. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit inject. We'll inject it right now, that way it'll be in there. Okay, give me one second. So let me go ahead and get started to unravel this. And then we're also gonna do another thing if you stay tuned uh, for later on in the video. Uh, I'm gonna actually show you not just programming the controller box, but I'm thinking of mounting the button uh, Since I found out how easy it was just to mount a button right here, and it looks really aesthetically pleasing I think it'll look since I have one more to come in pairs when you buy them. I think I'm mounting it somewhere 
because you know how you can't open the front unless you use your app and your app takes like 20 seconds to load and then or you have to come over here open your door and then reach over and then tap your front trunk open like this well it's nice but i mean there might be a better way so i asked Hanshaw if they can maybe throw in a a kick sensor they do don't want to do it for safety reason but i kind of like the idea of being able to put your feet underneath there and just having it the sucker open especially when you're trying to roll up your car cover you're already carrying a full load in your arms like this you know what i mean the last thing you want to do is try to reach for a button or the app so i always have to set my phone here and get my app and you know click it open so i kind of like the idea closing is no problem you can always reach over here and close it the idea is i want to be able to open it and close it i guess if i'm going to do the switch i might as well do it all i'll have to figure out how to run it the wires and I'm thinking if I can get my door open this far I can come back here and maybe tap it somewhere right here since this is an isolated plastic cover I can always find a replacement for if I ever damage it I'm thinking of putting the button right here but then again if you close the door you can't use it to open so you might always have to have the door gap or if I put it right here in this corner here near the front of the dash the button I think it will actually allow me to um, be able to control easily within arm distance I can push and close even with the door closed and so forth and I still think I can reach it from here. You know, I just got to feel the metal coldness of the stainless steel chrome black. I can just push it myself right here. I mean, there's no other way to put it outside externally, you know what I mean? But the buttons, again, if you haven't seen my other video, I, they, they come in pairs of two, so it's kind of nice to have those buttons here. So let me see if I can find the buttons again. I didn't bring it of all the things I do and I don't bring the buttons I need <laughs> uh, yeah I might not have brought it in I guess I thought I brought everything I could have now that uh, oh you know what I might have it in my um, probably my armrest area only me there it is I always kind of remember my things so we'll get back to the switch in a little bit here I uh, just want to share it with you that's what I'm planning on is pretty much mounting this guy right here let's take him out and just see if it how it looks nicely or not. Okay. I'm gonna take it out of this little small bag as well. And it comes with a little rubber O-ring. We'll get that in a little bit. So what do you think? Right here maybe? It's gonna flush in. Hopefully there's enough gap here to hold. I think there is, I have to make sure before I drill it, because I need to have at least an inch of clearance for this to be able to suck in all the way. Or I was thinking of putting it right here. And you know, the chrome won't show anymore, it's just gonna be the black, so. I think I have a little, a nice little extellic extel jewelry piece without over crumbling. Then I can just push it and it'll open my hood. Again, the idea is to be able to reach over and push the button wherever it's at, or right here, then it'll trigger my hood open. I always like to gear everything toward convenience of the driver's side, including running the positive wire. By the way, I did run the positive line to my trunk. I didn't go through the battery so uh, directly. I went through the positive terminal that was actually mounted here on this area over here, just above the dash a little bit. So I need to know how to actually get to the switch because in order for me to actually tap it, I believe there's a wire there I have to tap. I have to review it again, don't quote me on this one. So I have to actually tap the original OEM wire that's here somewhere in the harness area when I take the cover off tap that wire I have to run the whole wire back and you know ground can be anywhere I can find ground in the metal chassis of the car anywhere but that wire there needs to be tapped I didn't want to deal with too much of the uh, well we didn't know how I would love to be able to tap somewhere here the mechanism of the inner dash but that's where we'll be mounting the switch so look forward to that video um, I'm not sure we'll call it the next segment here or however but yeah it'd be nice to be able to open the trunk you know just like that and the front i mean to be able to put my car cover on there but i got to work with my hand right now in fact i'm a little thirsty just had a breakfast burrito there oh. all right let's gear up oh. all right so here we go uh we got that in there already we got pretty much my computer went to sleep on me which is fine so that's ready Oh, I don't even know how to use my own computer. Inject it <laughs> by pushing it down first. Okay, so we're going to have to rip all this up again, uh, which is kind of not fun. But that's the way it goes. 
you know, this takes a lot of 10 minutes to just kind of wiggle your finger and get back over this. I don't know any other quicker way. I wish there was a little uh, wedge pattern. If you had like maybe a set of, I don't know, five hands, you might be able to all hold in place while one of you just tuck it in. But since we don't have five arms or five hands, we can't do it. So you can see here how I pull, just kind of pull it neatly. There's little rokas that's anchored in with metal. I think I'm, one of them got lost in there, so I brought my little... It's so easier with the right tool. Like for instance, you see here. Oh, actually this fell off too. Great. Now, oh no, it didn't fell off. See, there's one, two, and then this one's missing and that one. So I'm hoping it's somewhere in here. So we'll find out. You could probably peel some of these guys off if you have good fingernails. But since my finger is not that strong, this is what a couple little plastic tools can do for you. Or you can just get like a, you know, flat screwdriver, but just be really careful. It's plastic on plastic on metal, so this isn't much easier. It's kind of, you can pop it all out. You might have to take the base out first, or that's why I like this one. It gives a little bit more angle to work with. Do that. Save it nicely here. Um, I'm not sure if I should pull all these out, but I'll do it anyway. Okay, much easier with the right tools, right? Uh, again, you want to start with the little nail part. You can see I'm doing. And just work it out. Okay, now that's off. You can see here clearance there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find that little missing. All it does is slides in like, like right here. So that's beyond the point of actually doing the <laughs> TF card update, but I just want to show you uh, what I use. I use this guy right here. Just to stretch them out a little bit. There we go. And hopefully he'll hit something loose metal that he'll grab. I did try to put my finger in here. All I felt was the cushion underneath this one. So I'm thinking the bike car vibration that fell, it probably maybe rolled it down further, and which just kind of sucks. And I'm parking the incline way where it's actually leaning toward the hood of the car. So that doesn't help any, right? But let's just see. It might miracle ricochet and Maybe fell in here or something. I doubt it, but we'll see. Okay, I'm just fishing here. Nope, didn't hear anything pop or rip or... Now what I can do is just take this, shrink, I'll shrink it a little bit smaller. Again, I brought, I then forgot to bring my tripod again. There we go. Oh shoot, now this whole rolling thing. <laughs> now my tools almost disappeared in there. All right. This is not that fun when you're losing something. It's not that critical to have that one piece that still holds everything well. I might have maybe dropped it out when I, you know, misplaced it somewhere. But I'll look for a little bit more in detail. But let's get going forward here. We got program the controller box. Again, remember I carried it over here. I'm not sure, but it might have just to be on the safe side. Let's see if I can find it here. I doubt it though. There's all kinds of little metal loose part, but I don't think I put it on that side where the the metal would loose. Nope. Yeah. You know, you just trace back where you think you might have placed something. Okay. So I can't find it at the moment. <clears throat> That's okay. We'll work on it later. My back is killing me. I got to sit down in this chair. Helps so much. Whew. Especially that sciatica. Okay, so you can see here the switch is already mounted, and just go by again. If you know what's great is I since I tilt the switch this side, when it hits this ground, it still helps it ground some more. So it's not going to be a really a big problem for me if it touches this side of the switch. But as long as it doesn't touch the white one, to short it, because we don't want to do that. Because I believe if I touch these two together, it might create a short, and the trunk might close. So watch. See, this is the metal, right? I'm going to touch these two together. There you go. See, I triggered it. <laughs> Not sure you guys saw that. That's all Switch does. It just makes the opening and closing. So <clears throat> that's what that's what happens there. What happens when you short the two together? It creates a, a pretty much a closed circuit. It's laying this like you would normally push this one time consecutive. But I'm not pushing. It. I just want to show you. Yeah, see. My arm's not pushing it, but as soon as these two things touch and short each other out via the metal of the the car chassis, you'll see. There you go. Say that. I'm not pushing anything. There you go. Anyway, that's just. I'll let you know. Let's go back and get started on the ROM update. 
before I make this video longer than it should be for just to updating the TF card, right? Okay, so you can see here, mine's all nicely tucked in the back here. I can't wait to install this new update because I'm told that it can allow you to do the soft close now. So we'll find out, okay? So you can see here, I'm just bringing it all out for you. That way you guys can see and you guys can see where the buttons are and everything. And speaking of which, um, well, I can always use this to poke it. This is fine. I can just poke it with this guy. Okay, let's go ahead and do the card update, shall we? All right, let's grab it. Okay, so when we can insert in with all the wires connected to it. Like you see here, I have all the wires connected to it. The pretty much the shock. The, the blue ones are left and right. It doesn't even matter which one because they both close at the same time, these shocks. So those are all the blue wires. This one is pretty much your soft close automatic door. This is the one that we reprogrammed it supposedly with this one update. And then we have the state signal right here. Again, I was saying that the green wires, if you look at it, it's tap to almost the same white wire. If you trace this one back, it goes back to the state signal. See that? I could have used this and tap it directly to the white wire also, but that'd be, it's already like kind of less space already for me because the green wire directly right now is, is to the Kickstarter. And then this white wire is actually to my switch. So you can see that. So the, the actual primary one is still white wire. So I used my white wire pretty much to let me know that this is going to my, um, my signal wire for the switch. And then the green wire, I reverse it and brought it back to the ground wire. Uh, not reverse it like I just reverse color code it for my switch connection really that's it okay so let's go and pop this guy in very delicate here all right let's bring him up a little bit it actually works perfect there's no bulge or anything I think uh, I think Hanshaw did a great setup when they made everything in the left now unfortunately the new one version 3 it's all in the right hand side so you're gonna have to do a little bit of like mounting and everything over here is very secure and also the power line goes straight into like where I showed you the B plus power line right here this way it's brought directly from that little area there and which it wasn't that hard actually um, you know and I'm a pretty fat hand guy and really big too I'm like um, I don't want to get give my, my entire weight but I'm around two to over 200 let's just say so it wasn't that um, it wasn't that hard to squeal down there and twist my arm a little bit. You can feel it. You, I can see where I was mounting much. I can only feel it. So here it goes. I'm gonna put it in there. It only goes a certain direction, by the way. You can't put it in the other direction. You can see here it's a constant green light, and then it's also a flashing red light every two seconds, right? One, two. Okay. So when you put it in there for the first time with your update.bin file, you rename it's gonna actually start flashing the red light consecutively for, I say about 10 seconds to be to be frank. There we go, we can count it too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's counting a little bit faster, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so like I was right, 15 seconds a while back. So 15 seconds, and when you see a constant red already, go ahead and just tap it. The green is still constant, okay? The red is now constant until you pull it out. There we go. We injected it. And now it should go back to where it was, blinking every two seconds. And if you notice there, everything is now set to really default. So let's see what the defaults are, really. We'll close it. Very, very slow. Okay, so we're going to do all the adjustment here in just a little bit. Okay, so the first adjustment you could do is very simple. It's pretty much, first of all, you can set it to where you want it to for the trunk. I'll do it the right way here for you. Uh, you can see it takes three seconds for it to open. Again, that's pretty much what the default. It's supposed to be uh, in the trade-off. It's supposed to make it quieter because it takes this time to release the latch and be quiet about it before it actually unlocks this guy right here. But I really think it's just a waste of time. <laughs> I want it to open fast. Okay, so let's say the first thing you want to start it, you want to adjust the level you want it to. Like for instance, uh, depending on your height, you know, if you don't want the trunk to open fully, you can just drag it very slowly where you want it to, right? Let's say you want it halfway like right here. Like, let's say, you, you know, your spouse or whoever uses the car with you, she can't reach it or he can't reach it that certain height. Okay, so let's say you only want this high or you want to make sure your kids can actually help you, uh, you know, take things out of the trunk and they're really small still. You, once you get to that certain height, you can hold this down. While you're holding it down, you might as well set the speed. The speed will allow you to go from one to six. One being the slowest that you see right here and six being the fastest, it'll close and open. You know what I mean? It's not gonna 
but however it's not going to release the latch any quicker that's a different setting and that has to do with the controller box which i'll talk to you in a little bit but simply once you get to the certain height that you want if you want it all the way like i do because I'm, I'm i'm almost six feet i push it all the way up and i just hold it down but since let's just say for example you want this height right here let's see so you can see from the angle so you can see how how lower it is now this is full way by the way all the way up you can see that i love this rolling to share okay so let's just say you want only certain like oh shoot that yeah, see it's already activating to close now it's going automatically yeah that's why you don't want to force it uh quick enough you want to take your time slowly okay let me go and open it back see that it takes three seconds for it to release the latch to open it has nothing to do with the speed of the trunk opening or closing, by the way. This is totally separate. But this is what we're adjusting to for the speed of the trunk to open and close right now. So I'm just going to go and pull it. You know, you don't have to pull it that slowly. Just, you know, just kind of pull it, you know, just so it won't trigger the alarm. Hopefully I don't trigger it. I only have to do it. Okay. I'm going to do it really low. Low is right here where I can see eyeball, eyeball. Okay. So this is where I'm going to want it, right? That way my kids can help me and, you know, they can reach over. However, uh, you know, I already installed this other button. They wouldn't even have to do that. They can just push the side button. But just say you don't have the side button. You got to go and get this this low, right? So what you do is you hold it down. Again, the first beep you hear, this is going to be a long press, meaning you hold it down. So let's go to the fastest one, all right? You already saw this is number one beep right here. Watch. I'm holding it. That's the first beep is what's currently right now. This is the second beep, which is uh, speed faster two times two, feet faster times three and four now. This is speed faster times five, and this is speed faster times six. And this is the fastest one. If you notice, I'm still holding on to it. It's not gonna go anymore for me. It'll stop at the last beep, okay? So this is it, and then we can push it again. And let's see if it starts. Okay, and then we just go ahead and open it back. Once it opens up, it'll go quicker. Is that it? Much quicker. And there you go. See, it paused exactly where we want it to. Now, in my preference here, I'm tall, and that would be a very inconvenience for me to be, you know, because my height is, you can see here, I'm, I'm almost like right here. So I, it's too short for me. Uh, so I need to reach underneath, and that's not really cool. So what I'm going to do is pull it up as much as I can high, okay? And then what I'm going to do now is go ahead and push it. Hold it down. Okay, we're gonna go six beeps still. There it goes, I think that's the last one. By the way, I'm proud of my license plate, I just got it. Uh, it's it actually wasn't a custom license plate, but I guess they got the numbers right or in sequence It looks pretty cool what it says if you can see right here It says eight if you spell the three backwards. It says eight love 95 I think 95 was a good year for me. That's probably the year. I might have uh, you know was still in college I believe <laughs> So there we go So now it's gonna go to the highest level But we still have to adjust pretty much the speed of the lock opening and the speed of the lock opening is either one second or three seconds uh, going by beeps. So what you do is you do a short press on the controller box without having to trick the lock or anything like that, okay? We're just holding the controller box. We're gonna do a short press. Since it's currently at the slowest speed right now, it's set to two beeps, but if we push it right now, it's gonna only set to one beep and that's gonna give us the one second that we're looking for. And it's gonna do like a little reassurance beep like five seconds later. Here we go, watch. Short. There you go. And you can see it jiggle a little bit. There you go. <laughs> All right. So now it's going to set to a really fast. This has nothing to do with anything other than opening the latch fit quicker for us. So we might have to help it by pulling it down. If you notice that that thing was moving. Interesting, huh? All right. So let's help it pull it down. It's no problem. Okay. Now you can see how much more faster response it is. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and kick it. Ooh, look at that. No more three seconds motor running delay. And in fact, I'll do it again just to make sure for you. Let me go and close this. 
Now, next thing we're gonna do is set the pressure of the clothes. It's so hard, I recommend um, that you be able to adjust it right because I think even with the PPF protection, I noticed that the hard clothes started ruffling up my PPF film and luckily I have PPF film or else it would probably do the next thing is probably with my um, paint protection. Uh, film helped a lot, so uh, you don't wanna get into digging in your clear coat. So here we go, opening back up. You can see that, very quick response, one second. Okay, now for this one, you do have to actually trick the lock. So I do actually have to get my little needle nose or whatever I can find. You can do this one too, but that might be hard too. Yeah, you can put it there, here we go. I'm just gonna use this magnet here. Uh, you know what, just in case no one has it, they can, don't think that you have to use something like that. Let me just try to find that guy. He's, yeah, he's in here. He's in here with my pre-drill earlier. All right. There we go. Just, you can even use this too if you want an Allen wrench or something. Here, I'll use the Allen wrench. Most people can relate to finding an Allen wrench around. Okay, you can use the Allen wrench that they provide for you, Hanshaw. So you can use that to trick it. There we go. Just slap it out. There we go. That's to tighten the, the drill there. But anyway, that's closed. You can see what it did was, uh, if you release, I'll show you. See that? It moves this back up and down. What it does, it tricks the system, it grips it, and it pulls it down. So what I'm going to do... Let's trick the system. You can see this right here, it moves. Sorry, I'm not sure you can see it. But let me do it one more time just to make sure we'll release it. You see this thing moves back up. Okay, so the minute we push this closed, and it puts the box to sort of sleep. So you only have really like less than 10 seconds to really pull this off. So here we go. All right, so now the box is ready. Be programmed. So we're gonna set it for the slowest. So the first beep is the slowest. Oh, that was a short beep, I just messed up. What it's now it's gonna do, if you notice it, it's gonna go back to three seconds delay. I'll show you what I mean. All right, I'll hop in. Don't get this confused, okay? This is not has to do with the, the strength just yet. Uh, I kind of messed up and I set it to watch. You'll see it, you'll see. Do that three seconds before it opens up. That's my fault. I did a short press and I kind of chickened out. So let me go and set it back to one. Now you can press it again. Just a quick press like this. It's not, it has to do with strength. It's gonna jiggle this a little bit. Okay, now set back to one. I could probably push this, who knows. No, okay. We'll help it. Let me get my, strength, uh, my, uh, um, my latch to open quicker. There we go, back to one second at latch open. Now let's go and do the strength test again. Let's go and start again. We'll get our Allen that comes with your hand saw. Okay. Trick the system. We have very little time left. Okay, I'm gonna hold this down. And I'm gonna go through all the beats for you. There you go, see I'm long pressing I call it, okay? Now that's one beep, what that means is the softest close. If you go up to five, that means it's gonna be the hardest close. When it gets near like six inches away, you can see you can see the pressure, like it grips it quickly and it slams. So here it goes, this is supposed to be the softest close. Oh, I forgot, we got to push this guy here. If you notice there, I didn't do what uh, Frugal Tesla did was he tricked the latch to reopen back. It's okay, you don't have to do that. Okay, but you do have to help it close initially, I guess. All right. This not, has nothing to do with opening it faster or nothing. This has to do with closing it now. So that's what we're testing with. Okay. So let me get deep here. Okay, man, we did the one long press for the closing strength, okay? Don't get confused with the short press. That has to do with opening the latch faster. Okay, let's see. See, the soft close actually still comes. Oh, nice. See that? No more boom. I think it worked. Okay, I'll show you the difference. Okay, I'm gonna do a long press again, but I'm gonna hold all the way to the hardest close setting, which is number five. Again, strength goes up to number five. Trunk speed goes up to number six. Don't get those two confused. I know there's kind of different madness to the madness, but again, in order to do the uh, trunk closing uh, strength, you have to make sure you trick the latch. You don't have to worry about opening it back in anyway. I'll, I could try, but we'll see. Okay, so anyway, let me go ahead and uh, not whip this out like that, but let me go ahead and push this down because I only had 20 seconds for the box dies. See, the box died already before I got a chance. That's that's a problem. You only have a certain amount of time, so we have to reset everything. To trigger this box back open, you can't use any of your 
controller box from your controller. Oh, you can actually. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this again. Let's trick the lock. And I got to get started on it right away. I can even use this Allen wrench. You can use this Allen wrench to push it back too, by the way. I didn't know what I was thinking. Here we go. That's one. That's two harder closing times. That's three harder closing. That's four harder closing. And this is five harder closing. Hopefully it doesn't break my trunk. <laughs> so here we go. It's gonna release that pop back. Now what you could do is reach over here and push it good, I believe. But still it doesn't work, you have to help it. So that's fine. We just need it to open and uh, pretty much trick the latch in order for the, the system to recognize what we're trying to do. Just like when we're pulling it down to a certain level. Okay, so this is, has nothing to do with anything else other than making sure the trunk closing strength when it gets down to six inches. See how actually harder it closes. This is supposed to be the hardest one, okay? So let's see. It comes down like normal, like everything. Boom, you hear that? It's so much harder. It's so much harder. Okay, let's do it again so you guys can see the difference between the trunk strength. Okay, here we go. Okay, see, everything's normal speed, and then all of a sudden, boom. Literally, you could probably chop someone's head off. I'm just kidding. It's not gonna really chop your hand. In fact, you could put your hand in there, but I wouldn't recommend it. That seems like a pretty darn hard close. And this thing does have some strength compared to the front uh, trunk. So we're gonna go and go back to where we were. I'm gonna try to do it uh, this way again. Again, you don't have to worry about the green latch. Don't deal with that. Um, okay, we're gonna hold this down. Again, this is uh, version two modified wires for version three. Why I'm, I'm doing it a little differently than Frugal Tesla. I found out he did have only version 2.0. Um, let's see, my battery, my box died out before I was able to get everything. So just kind of kind of nice to have the button here, huh? Wake it up. Okay, wait, I have to trick it again because everything's reset it. You remember again, when you push it in, this lever here thinks that, you know, it's already gripped it and it's pulling it in now. That's what makes it pull in harder in or pull it in further. It still slams, slam is basically on the shock strength when it realized, okay, we're almost near the end. Let's, let's give it a yank. That's what it's doing. Oh shoot, I <laughs> wasted time too long. <laughs> let me just go and release that crick. Oh, can't do that, see, it's dead. So let me go and open this button again, get some power to this. Let's do it again. I won't, I won't chit chat waste here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go for one. Hold it, long press. That's it, that's all we need. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna use the green to release it. Maybe I could, maybe I should. Okay, I'm gonna just do it. I'm releasing it, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this button here. See, mine doesn't still do it, even with the software update, but that's okay. That's only for setting it up anyway, so it's not a big deal, it's not like I really need that for it to do it. I just wanna make sure it works. Going back to the softest clothes, okay? So I really appreciate, uh, Hanshaw for sending me the special update. If you guys want the update as well, you can contact Hanshaw or myself and I'll be able to send you that file via update. I'm not sure yet. I have authorization to put in the description, so we'll find out. So anyway, let's go and close it. Okay, see that? Much, much, much more better. This is the way I like it. Now, if it can flash lights and play melody music of love, Peace like the Beatles. <laughs> It'll be a little too far. Maybe make the tail lights like flickering, uh, you know, rainbow techno color or something like Vegas or something when it's closing. <laughs> the hand shot I can only ask for so much. Okay, well, this is it. Now you guys know how to program your box. Uh, you guys know exactly what to do from moving into the laptop. First of all, you update the file name, whatever it is. The controller box would not read other than if it's changed over to update.bin. Now, if you have an old existing one in there already called update and you don't want to lose it, you can move it back to your computer and rename it something else before you transfer over the next file because you should only keep one update.bin in your, uh, I call it micro SD, but it's really called a TF card, I guess they call it. So make sure you don't get no more than uh, 32 gigabyte unless I believe it's better if you save I get an 8 gigabyte one You don't need all that storage here. You're just using it purposely just to store their file and Format fat 32 on your computer and then transfer it over here And when it's uh, pretty much blinking like this you put it in there even with all the accessories attached including the power You don't have to worry and then just watch and tell everything uh, when you put it in there, it's gonna be about 15 seconds. This thing is gonna be blinking constantly faster than this, like within half a second, keeps blinking. Like, it'll blink twice in half a second. 
and then after 15 seconds it'll be a solid constant red just like it always have been a solid green here no matter what you have as long as there's power to the box there's always going to be a solid green uh, and then you can take out the card when you take out the card it'll go back to blinking it's normal flashing two second flash uh, i mean flash per two second versus two flashes per per half a second let's say okay and that's it uh and then it's going to set everything back to default and you guys know already how to program it back to where you need it to be to be able to uh, get it to the certain speed that you like and the certain closing strength that you like you might not have the closing strength like i said again version 3 updates um, but if you do request it just let me know i can try to send you that file uh, but you will also have the ability to be able to um uh you know set your um pretty much how the level you want it to and then your i, I said already right uh, closing strength was the most critical one for me but also set the speed of how the latch unlocks you know within that three second one so that's it uh hopefully this video helps you guys out if you guys stay further i'll be shooting the next video and trying to figure out where the hole is where i can come through the dash cleanly without drilling i don't want to you know i mean i can always do the drilling from this corner here and bring the wires through here but again i'm trying to keep everything inside internally clean so we'll find out well i know i need to probably take this off this whole unit here and then including underneath here which i did it before to get to the positive b power for my um my um trunk handshaw so that's it michael from ncy store hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a comment in the description and also if you like to order uh, or even need help installation feel free to contact me thank you